recent lockdowns during the COVID-19 pandemic have restricted various aspects of our daily lives. And Dr. Mike Azul from the Central Michigan University recently investigated the impact of these restrictions on the mental health of university students. Micah, it's great to have you with us today. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, yeah, thank you, Alistair. This is a, a wonderful platform. I, I do appreciate you reaching out and uh, you know, giving myself uh, the opportunity to talk about our, you know, some of our work that we're doing. So thank you. Thanks. Also asking questions will be Dr. Marlies from the University of Toronto. Micah, can you first shed some light on the mechanisms as to why sitting time was associated with both depression and anxiety? And how would physical activity act in the brain to alleviate this negative impact on mental health? You know, I think uh, data suggests that uh, individuals sit a lot. You know, I think uh, in the US, Canada, the UK, uh, the average sitting time is, you know, nine to I think up to 12 or so hours uh, per day. So people, people are sitting, uh, you know, quite a bit. In our data, I think the, the students um, were sitting on average about eight, a little over eight and a half hours per day. Um, and sitting time uh, was the only variable that was linked to both uh, depression and anxiety. Um, even more so than, uh, you know, physical activity. So, uh, you know, people who are, who met activity guidelines, both moderate and vigorous activity guidelines still wasn't as strongly associated with depression and anxiety as simply uh, sitting time was. And each hour of sitting time was, you know, linked to or predicted, you know, higher levels of depression and anxiety. I think the mechanism is difficult and, it's likely like a multifactorial um, reasoning, but you know during lockdowns that you know students, you know may not have the resources or the or the knowledge uh, or the coping abilities uh, to sustain physical activity, and I think therefore decide to sit more, uh, maybe sleep more. Um, I think some studies have explained that more people who watch TV or use computers are more sedentary therefore leading to increased risk for mental health problems, which I think is, is, is what happened during the, you know, some of the more severe COVID restrictions and lockdowns that were occurring. I, I do think the mechanistic data is, is, a, is, is challenging and, and probably lacking a bit. And, and I do also think that, and I think we'll visit on this later on, but I think we'd be remiss to, to think that, you know, the, the, uh, the depression, the anxiety, is happening uh, before the sedentary behavior is occurring or may be the reasoning why people are becoming more sedentary. But you know, for, for us, the depression and anxiety scores uh, were lower among people who were more active. And so I think mechanistically, exercise promotes uh, growth factors in the brain uh, that are linked to cognitive functioning, such as you know, processing speed, uh, memory, executive functioning. Um, so that may be one aspect of it. I think another one is uh, exercise has uh, mood enhancing benefits. So these these mood improvements don't wear off, meaning that every session of exercise that one participates in has the same benefit in terms of uh, improving mood state. Hi, Micah. Great to speak with you. Um, I would just like to ask about if you'd be able to comment on the impact of lockdowns and isolation on non-university students and, and other populations a little bit. So I, when I was going through your paper, I couldn't help but think about older folks that are especially vulnerable to COVID and, and the impact of lockdown yeah. from that angle. Like, are you able to comment a little bit on that as well? Yeah, sure, sure. And uh, Matt, I read you're, you're a protein guy too, aren't you? Yeah, uh, you, you've done some of that cool intermittent fasting work and stuff with the, the, Cana the, the, the famous Canadian uh, muscle researchers, huh? That's right, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. That's great stuff. Um, so the, the, you know, I think COVID, um, you know, I think COVID created a lot of stress related to uh, health, um, financial, social un uncertainties, um, and isolation lockdowns, I think, posed, you know, many ill effects. And I think researchers are continuing to report high rates of depression and anxiety among children, um, adults, especially during the, the lockdown measures. Um, and in fact, I think from our data set in a different paper, we, we reported um, higher levels of alcohol use 
you know, which was linked to depression during the lockdowns. You know, and I think those who remain in isolation, such as, uh, you know, by the individuals you're, you're thinking of, those with who are immunocompromised or uh, vulnerable groups are at even, I think, heightened risk for experiencing depression. Um, I think promoting activity is a simple means, though. I think we can improve mental health by, by encouraging folks to be active. Even a minimal amount of activity, you know, 10 minutes a day uh, is, has been shown to lower levels of depression. So I think, I think all, encouraging activity should be considered, but I think we also need to educate individuals about, you know, how to become more active, you know, and I don't think they have to be, it doesn't have to be excessive. I think just minimal amounts of it uh, seems to have tremendous benefit. Thanks a lot. And I wondered if there are any particular exercise training strategies or regimes like tools and other things that could be used to help address this issue in university students and perhaps even more broadly. Yeah, you know, I, I think, um, I mean, obviously there's, there's technology that, that uh, people have access to. And I think simple things like step counts, you know, and I know, uh, you know, physical activity researchers, you know, talk a lot about trying to achieve certain step count numbers or, or um, uh, values in a certain day. I think small goals like say 5,000 steps in a day um, is, a, is a reasonable goal. And I think, you know, there's so many various pedometer technologies out there, apps and such that people people can use. I, I mean, you know, it's, there, there's so many simple things like, uh, like standing, for example, you know, just uh, standing and transitioning from sitting to standing, both of these, you know, very simple movements, you know, increase energy expenditure. You know, I think we're, I mean, for us, we're trying to develop interventions um, to promote physical activity with university students who are sedentary. And I, I think what's surprising to, to me and is that so many young people just don't know how to be active. You know, it, you think it would be like somewhat common sense, but they just don't have the knowledge of, of how to, to be active, how to develop an exercise program. And we're trying to educate them on how to be how to be active, how to meet physical activity guidelines and goals with the hope that they develop these behaviors that then, you know, will extend into later life. So we're trying to work on like teaching, you know, it's kind of funny teaching students, <laughs> but teaching them how to be active. It, it sounds very simple, but to me, it's really surprising that it, it's, you know, I'm, I'm fairly new to the physical activity researching realm. So, you know, these are some of the things that have really kind of opened my eyes. Thanks a lot. Um as you alluded to in your manuscript about reverse causality playing a role in that lockdowns reduced physical activity behavior and that might then have influenced mental health. From that perspective, would you expect things to normalize as we emerge from COVID, hopefully, with a reduction in levels of depression and anxiety? And do you see physical activity as being the major cause of that? Yeah, I mean, I think that. I mean, it seems to me, and, and I don't know about where you all are, um, but at least in the U.S., we're starting to see some of the restrictions being lifted. And, you know, I think that as people are returning back to, you know, social activities and physical, acti physical activities, I think we're starting to actually see the changes in, in, in individuals. I know, unlike in our students, you know, we're finally returning back to face-to-face -face instruction. And... You're seeing it with the student, Matt. I don't know if you, I don't know if you do much teaching at all, but um, you know, for for myself, just seeing the students in the classroom, they're more engaged. You know, there's a social aspect there uh, that that's been missing the last, you know, two years. And so, I, I think just that aspect, the social piece, and I think that will tend to lead to more. You know, my hope is more physical activity. Um, but I, I mean, even I think some of the things that are happening across industry, for example, I think I saw today Peloton, for example, is reducing their workforce because of slow uh, sales. Sales are slowing down. Um, and they, they cited that oh, people are returning back to the gym or they may not uh, be using the device. There may be some trends that are happening that are shifting you know, back towards maybe uh, uh, people doing things that they did prior to the, the pandemic. Yeah, I can certainly relate to that from my own environment. There's a real appetite to get back into in-person settings and, and obviously gyms are reopening and all those other environments. So 
yeah, I can certainly relate to what you're saying. Thanks a lot, Micah. Yeah, you know, I think people are also, you know, people who would engage in say like the the weekend uh, competitions, you know, the triathlons and the, the whatever various races and runs, those things are starting to now resume. And so people are back out doing their, you know, their different training re regimes and, and doing those activities now. So that's, I think those all are positive behaviors, hopefully that, that we can continue, right? It, it, without, you know, too many more setbacks. Micah and Matt, many thanks for joining this discussion today. And let me wish you all the very best with your further work. Thank you. Thank you so much.